Hey everybody, it's David. So you might have seen a trailer for a new film coming out pretty soon called Arrival. It's arriving in cinemas in the US on November 11th and it's all about how do we communicate with advanced alien civilizations. So obviously that's science fiction, right? But you might be amazed to learn that astronomers really are trying to communicate with other civilizations. So I thought I'd tell you in this video about how we are trying to do that. This enterprise is known as the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, S-E-T-I or SETI for short. So SETI is not really a new idea. Arguably the first scientific paper on the subject was all the way back in 1959. That was by Morrison Okokone, who pointed out that we could look in the radio band for emissions from extraterrestrial civilizations. And this makes sense, right? In the late 20th century, communicating with radio waves was one of the most cost-efficient and effective means of broadcasting over large distances that human beings knew of. So think about just listening to the radio or watching TV. All of that was being sent with radio waves. If these radio waves are sufficiently high frequency, they can actually pass through the ionosphere of the Earth, thereby leaking into space and unintentionally revealing our presence to other civilizations. That idea actually forms a part of the film Contact, where the first signal received by another civilization from the Earth is Hitler speaking at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. So if other civilizations could detect us by our unintentional and also intentional radio waves being transmitted into space, perhaps we could detect other civilizations using the same idea. That's why ever since 1960, with Frank Drake's famous Project Osmo experiment, astronomers have been looking in the radio for signals from other civilizations. But one of the greatest obstacles for radio SETI, apart from funding of course, is knowing which frequency to listen to. How should we tune our radio receiver? So you get the idea. These radio transmissions could be very, very tight in frequency space. And if we don't know which frequency to listen to, we're going to completely miss the message. One of the ideas proposed by astronomers to try and solve this is called the radio waterhole. Now in general the universe is not radio quiet, I mean that's why radio astronomy even exists. So you look anywhere in the sky you're going to receive radio waves from all sorts of astronomical events. But it turns out that at a frequency band between 1400 megahertz and 1700 megahertz the universe is intrinsically pretty quiet. Now since this is an intrinsic property of the universe itself then all of the civilizations in the universe should agree about it. And thus, this is the most cost-effective band at which to attempt radio communication. Of course, despite years of trying and looking in this radio band and other radio bands, astronomers have yet to discover confirmed signal from another civilization. Perhaps because of this null result to date, Astronomers have been increasingly thinking about other ways civilizations might communicate with us, aside from radio. After all, we're not really using radio anywhere near as much as we used to. For example, we use fiber optics often for communications these days. One attractive alternative is known as optical SETI, and it really focuses on looking for really laser beams produced by another civilization. The big advantage for lasers is that they're a very narrow beam, so you really direct it at the planet that you want to communicate with. So instead of radio, which just spreads out in all directions into the sky, all the energy is contained within this very narrow beam and therefore you don't have to have such a powerful transmitter in the first place. But the majority of laser beams that human beings build are monochromatic, which means that all of their energy is being dumped at a very specific frequency of light. Fortunately, astronomers have known for a very long time how to look at a huge number of frequencies of light at the same time. It's called spectroscopy. Think of this like a prism. A prism takes a white light beam and it will split it up into a rainbow of all of the different frequencies, all of the different colours of light at once. So we know how to look, but do we know when to look? This is really important from an economic perspective. I mean, let's imagine that we wanted to communicate with a distant star. It would entail us basically turning on a kilowatt, maybe even a megawatt laser, continuously, all the time, pointed at that one particular star. And if we wanted to communicate our presence to all of the stars in the galaxy, then we're talking about 100 billion of those lasers. So one argument would be that it quickly becomes impractical to communicate this way. You can't just leave laser beams on pointing in all directions of the sky at all times. But what if there was a special moment in time at which it made sense for other civilizations to attempt to communicate with one another? Kind of analogous to the waterhole that we had for radio setting. If such a time existed, it would save observers a huge amount of resources. Instead of having to look at all of the stars all of the time, we would only have to look at them at very specific instants, very specific moments. In a paper by my graduate student Alex Tichy and I earlier this year, we actually argue that such a special time does exist. We argue that a great candidate for this special time would be the instant at which that alien planet appears closest to us as it's going around on its orbit. 
Now we are able to measure for all of the exoplanets we've discovered when that moment in time will happen. It's called the time of inferior conjunction. One of the reasons why this moment in time is so special is that if the orbital inclination of that alien system is aligned to us, we would see that planet pass in front of its star. We would see a transit event. Now remember that transits are the apparent decrease in a star's light as a planet passes in front. Typically it just lasts for a few hours. So transit events are special and all observers in the universe can agree when we expect those events to occur. So we think that this small window in time when the planet would be seen to transit if it had the right inclination provides kind of a temporal equivalent to the radio waterhole. For example, with the case of the Earth, the Earth's transit would last for about half a day, and of course that orbital period around the Sun is 365 days. So it would actually narrow down your search space in time by a factor of 730. So that's almost a three orders of magnitude saving in your telescope resources. This also makes a lot of sense from a geometric perspective. I mean, for example, you wouldn't want to choose the time to communicate to be when the planet passes around the back of the star, rather than, as we propose, the front. This is, of course, because as the planet goes around the back of the star, the star itself will be blocking out all of the signals you're trying to transmit. The counter-argument to this would be that we're doing xenopsychology. We're trying to guess the mindset of an alien civilization, which we have no context to how they would think. So let's imagine that me and Alex are completely wrong, and this advanced civilization are transmitting signals at essentially random times relative to the orbital phase of their planet. So in that case, focusing our optical SETI efforts at the time of inferior conjunction of these exoplanets would be no better or no worse than just picking random times. Thus, in the worst case scenario, we're just going to do as well as we're already doing. But in the best case probability, we're increasing the probability of a detection by three orders of magnitude. So not everybody agrees with this argument, and that's okay. This is how science works. We can have a conversation and discuss it. But I think we've got nothing to lose by at least trying this. Everybody, this is a hypothesis. This is an idea. If you have an alternative perspective on this, or you think there's a different time at which we should be looking for these optical SETI signals, let me know in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching this video everybody. I hope you'll go check out the movie Arrival too. I know I will. And if you like this video then do make sure you click the subscribe button below so you can hear about all of the new research happening here at the Cool Woods Lab. Remember when you click that button it really does help us out. So until next time stay curious.